Do you know, one of the best things about being a specialist hip surgeon for over 20 years, that it's given me loads of experience in dealing with people, understanding what they want and how they respond to surgery. And well, just life in general really. Careful patient selection and pre-operative planning help us to tailor the treatment to the individual, which should make everybody happy, if only it were that simple. You are a strange species, not like any other, and you would be surprised how many there are. Humans are complicated. We're a baffling mix of physical, genetic and psychological factors which make us respond in sometimes unpredictable ways to the stuff that happens to us. One thing that struck me over the years is how I do the same surgery over and over again, but the results can be so different. Let's take the case of how women and men compare. Now, to avoid any doubt, a woman is an adult human female, and of course, a man is an adult human male. When it comes to hips, you can't deny your biology because it affects the way that your skeleton develops and changes during life. Women's hips aren't the same as men's. You only have to look at the way men and women run and walk to see how different they are. Their pelvises are broader, their hip socket points a little bit more forward than a man's, and it's quite common to see that it's a little bit shallower in women. Women's hip joints are usually smaller than men's, and the femur, the thigh bone, tends to be a bit narrower. I noticed a long time ago that some types of hip replacements didn't fit the same way in men and women. It was subtle, but it just didn't feel or look quite right. The more you look at things, the more patterns you see, so I stopped using these implants in women. We also noticed that some women were much more sensitive to the materials from which the implants are made, particularly nickel and cobalt. Allergic reactions to these elements are uncommon, but they do happen and they can cause pain and sometimes loosening of the hip replacement. What about other things that are different? Well, around the time of the menopause, many women find that their joints ache. Bone cells have receptors in them that respond to hormones, particularly oestrogen, the female sex hormone. Oestrogen levels drop and this can cause osteoporosis, which is age-related bone thinning. Not only that, but low oestrogen levels can also make you more sensitive to feeling pain, even if you don't have arthritis or osteoporosis. You might be surprised to know that oestrogen is important in regulating bone density in men as well, but they don't tend to get osteoporosis until they're much older, in their mid-70s. Now, if you're paying attention, you might ask this question. Men have lower levels of oestrogen compared to women, so why don't they get osteoporosis earlier? Well, men start off with greater bone mass and density, so it takes longer to lose it. I told you it was complicated. We need to take all of these things into account when planning surgery, because they can affect the type of implants that are used. Having said that, for the vast majority of people, men and women, the type of hip replacement doesn't greatly affect the outcome of surgery. And your surgeon will, of course, use what's right for you. It's all about paying attention to detail. As you can see, there's lots of thought that goes into planning and doing surgery. It might feel as though it's all routine and effortless, but under the surface, there's furious activity going on. Every person and every hip is different. Isn't that wonderful? If you like this video, please comment or subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, then just get in touch. The details are below in the information. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.